Yo, what up? And welcome back to Grizz on a one, your favorite post game show for your Memphis Grizzlies. The Grizzlies lose 128 to 103 tonight, but yeah, it was boring. There's no way to talk that one up. So uh, I hope it uh, didn't put you in touch such a sleepy mood as it did myself and even maybe my co host. Uh, but tonight, the Grizzlies do go down 128 to 103. Uh, it was a game to kind of to write off, but there's so many good things to talk about. There's so many good things that me and Nate are going to hit on. And we're going to give you a little bit of Grizz trivia in the second segment. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit. Hey. He's already mad. He's already mad. <laughs> what happened now? The game ends and things are going wrong for me. I just hit the table and water spilled everywhere. So now I'm cleaning up a mess. It's just that kind of night for Memphis fans. It's unbelievable. Listen, um, I'm going to be very honest with you all. That game, I could not pay attention. Like, I had literally nothing going on. Like, there's nobody in my house awake. There's nothing happening. There's literally a monsoon happening outside, which, you know, makes all the internet and everything else, you know, janky. But um, I literally could not pay attention. There's no, like, I could not make myself think about that game in detail other than we just got our tail kicked. Anything that, uh, that got stuck out for you? Yeah, let me tell you something. I pulled my hamstring playing beach volleyball this weekend, which I asked me the last time I played beach volleyball. I'm not sure it's ever happened. <laughs> it's just what was happening. And I um, have a backcountry trip coming up in two weeks. So I'm like in full po- like old athlete rehab mode. And um, let me tell you what else was going on tonight and how I feel about that game. If anybody is on PlayStation Network and plays Hell Divers 2 and wants to hit me up, what go ahead and hell? put your – Go ahead and put your gamer tag in the uh, in the comments. We'll we'll play some Hell Divers too. Because let me tell you what was getting me through tonight. It wasn't the game itself. <laughs> it was uh, it wasn't the greatest game in the world. But I actually think there was good. I was surprised you thought there was anything good. I actually think there was some good. I literally it saw wasn't it. necessarily Jaren or Desmond Bain or stuff we want to be really good. But hey, take what you I can saw get. zero. And listen, to be completely I'm honest. Really- uh, the Black Ninja DJ, I wanted to watch Raw. Uh, so from my understanding, completely wrestling nerd talk, this was supposedly the best wrestling, like the best Raw that there's been probably in 10 years. I, I did see the ending, so uh, don't spoil anything for me just yet. I'm going to go back and watch it myself uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, but anyway, uh, tonight <laughs> I, I did not see much of it all. <laughs> Honestly, the game. Uh, it was a throwaway game for me. I ended up playing Rocket League uh, more than anything uh, because yeah. for 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 what I'll say is like Timu Bally's Grizzlies, like whatever's happening on that, I could not watch it. Um, I couldn't watch it on my TV w- within regular cable, so I had to go back and stream it uh, through my phone. And so that's the only way I could watch it. So I literally watched it on my on my phone the whole night. So that's probably half the reason I could not pay attention. Uh, but all right, let's go ahead and um, l- let's get to you and your positive thoughts on tonight. Well, first off, when I saw Raw, I didn't read the full sentence. I just thought we were describing what happened to the Grizzlies tonight. So <laughs> I, I didn't Raw. realize. I, I'm glad I read the full sentence and then just take it at face value. But um, listen, it, we all saw the bad. I will say, like, let's just get the one like truly negative thing out of the way. I was disappointed at Jaron tonight. So yep. Goon can have it, but I just didn't think Jaron really showed up for it. To be clear, that's not a, oh, I hate Jaron or a like an accusation of Jaron as a whole. He's the only guy who's been here all year going through all this. And they were so unbelievably outmatched by that team, <laughs> as is like most teams they play. So um, I, it's, it's a one-off, but I was like, oh, come on, man. Like, show it forward a little bit more, in my opinion. Um, yeah. All that to say, Scotty Pippen Jr. and actually Trey Jamison. Okay. Trey Jameson, and I didn't think Trey looked out of this world tonight, but I think every game he looks more and more like an NBA player. You know what I mean? Like, it's like yeah. every game, I'm like, okay, the game's slowing down. He knows where he's supposed to be. He's sliding in for some cuts. He's going and getting in a good position for rebounds. Like, 
there's a couple times he straight up beat Jokic for 50-50 rebounds tonight. And then, I mean, there's a couple that got poked away from him. I'm like, man, this is a dude who looks like he's finding his way into an NBA player form. So I, I just think that's really fun to see. Yeah. And a guy who I think we all wanted to succeed. So it's it's cool to see that. And Scotty Pippen Jr. just continues to prove he needs a roster spot. Yeah. It's, pr- it's um, pretty plain and simple. That dude has proven it every time he's been on the court. Yeah, so uh, on the roster spot, let's let's talk about that real quick. Uh, because I was added into a group chat on Twitter of some sort. Uh, by, by shout out to you, uh, Gris Company Main. Um, and so I, for whatever reason, I was just watching along of the different texts back and forth. And I will say that 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 was a topic of conversation through a different people is, you know, Scotty Pippen has to have a like a, a spot, a roster spot on the main squad. Right. But what I will say is he's already under contract for next season as a two way. OK, sure. I, I there is I, I won't say that he's not ready for a main roster spot because I, I think he he has shown enough flashes, but obviously this year is a complete write-off compared to what it was last year uh, and, and then what we're going to have next year. So what I will say is you don't have Scotty Scotty Pippen Jr. on a two-way contract and convert him to a regular contract because you already have him locked up. There's no reason to create more work for you unless you're just saying, hey, we need him to play 50 plus games next year. Right. Okay. I don't know if that's even a thought process just yet, but I will say as the season gets going, such as we saw Vince just here, such as we saw uh, Gigi, we eventually just go ahead and move um, him to a regular spot. If we do see some, some movement within, you know, I guess Rose can't, you know, compete. His body is failing him. Rose could step up and be awesome. Like there's so much unknown. There's no reason to go ahead and put the, cart before the horse that's an old man saying there's no reason to go ahead and make a move now and make it even harder for you like the roster crunch is already there uh and so i'll I'll say that um he's under contract no reason just just assume he's on the roster and just like forget that it's a two-way just forget and well we'll get paid later on and it's not going to be a gilly thing where all of a sudden we have to get these games out of guys (laughs) just scrape and claw to get these games so yeah, I think you're 100% right on that. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if moves are made next year that result in him ending up with the full contract. So yep. um, he's played really well. He looks like an NBA player and I think deserves an NBA roster spot. How he gets there is yet to be seen, but I'd be amazed if he doesn't wind up there. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, before we get to Trey Jemison real quick, uh, listen, I didn't realize this was a thing. I, yeah, I don't have a hat on. I Listen, I, I didn't realize that I, I always wear a hat, but I guess I do. Pretty much. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm I guess I got that that fresh cut, fresh cut. <laughs> um, yeah, listen, I, I did ask my wife for my listen. My my wife has been cutting my hair since COVID. Weirdly enough, she I bought some Get on her wall clippers, and we watched YouTube videos, and she learned how to cut my hair during COVID, and she's literally cut it for the last four years. And so when I when I need a haircut, I just ask. <laughs> and it magically happens if she's not too mad at me. But I will say she needs a glass of wine when she cuts hair. I one time she didn't, not a not the best cut. I gave her some uh, wine from here on out. It's the best cut. You better find the happy medium. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm talking about the first glass. Oh, yeah, okay. That's what I'm saying. Settles, settles the hands a little bit, maybe. Say, yeah, a glass and a half starts to get a little bit back towards the other direction, I would guess. Uh, now I'm a high school history teacher. Listen, I am not that smart. So, uh, so believe me, I'll take it. Agreed. Uh, all, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's, let's get into Trey Jemison real quick. And so, uh, yeah. on, on Scotty Pippen Jr. Real quick, it, it is 17 points, three, six from deep, two rebounds, four assists, uh, you know, played 26 minutes. He, he played a very good game. Trey Jemison real quick. Uh, after I said real quick, 17 times, um, eight points, five rebounds and an assist. Uh, three of five overall. And so let's look at his advanced stats. Uh, looks like he had a steal and a block. Uh, so shout out to uh, Trey Jemison. So what'd you see tonight? Because, you know, I, I did see some things, but what I see is honestly, it's just throwaway minutes. I think he can be a spot up guy, but I don't think there's anything there that just says like, we don't need to go get a center. I don't think he's cured no. that just yet. 
Okay. No, no, nothing along those lines. It is he is earning a way into like an end of the bench role. Okay. Right. Like he's just earning his way. And I'm not saying that's necessarily with the Grizzlies. Like all I'm saying is purely on the player itself. He right. looks more and more like an NBA player. And if you're making that progress in season in a situation like this, yeah. that bodes well for you and your career as a whole. Right. right. Like, so it just, it's, it's encouraging to see as someone who wants to see Trey Jamison succeed. Oh, like, I, it's, it's good to see. And he's, it's nothing crazy. It's all the little things, right? It's the, he gets the ball under the basket and he knows how to go up with it. It's not a get the ball panic. And all of a sudden you clank it off the backboard because you're just panicking, right? It's yeah. no, I got it. One power dribble go up. Right. And it's, just learning all those little nuances of the game. So yeah. that's that's what it's really fun to see. Um, again, him, even like Scotty Pippen Jr., if he was getting a full contract, I'm not necessarily saying it has to be with the Grizz. I'm just saying okay. as a whole, it's really encouraging to see. Now, Scotty Pippen Jr., I think, makes a lot more sense for a true contract with the Grizz once they can clear up roster issues next year. I'll have to say, Trey Jameson, we always said he has the raw athleticism to be like in Xavier Tillman plus, right? Okay. He doesn't have the tangible skill set yet, but yep. he continues to develop that skill set. So it's good to see. Yeah, as the Black Ninja DJ is saying is, you know, he has the NBA body, right? But the development, um, it it could be more rim runner, right? The pick and roll guy, the rebounder, the physicality. Like there, he needs to fine tune those skills. And, and the reason I say that is because this year has been incredible for him, right? He's he's found right. a spot uh, that potentially could be the, his team of the future. But the same thing with Scottie Pippen Jr. You know, they both need time to really develop their skills. What happens is you're going to see these guys, you know, be thrust into the, the limelight this year. And they're going to be key contributors on a bad team. Next year, the team will be much better. They won't be as needed. What's going to happen yeah. is they're going to go down to the G League because they're both on G League contract next year. And they're going to dominate. And this is going to allow them to say, all right, I was playing within the G League and I was kind of just neck and neck with everybody. I went up to the to the show, did my thing, and, re- and like the game slows down for you. And so yeah. they're going to go back down the G League and they're going to dominate uh, next year. And at that point, what's going to happen is, is you're going to be able to have the, the luxury as the Memphis run office and say, all right, we could bring up one of these guys and fill a role or fill a need and put them on a main contract and possibly uh, solidify this roster and, and feel comfortable going forward. We'll see. But I, I do think that they're going to dominate next year down in the G League. Yeah. And I think you're going to see them in the future, whether it is another two-year, two-way contract uh, or whether it is like a real roster contract. The, the, it's just so tight on the roster right now. There needs to be some kind of big move that is a three-for-one, which rarely happens, um, that allows us to use some of these guys but that also brings back a big name. So I just don't know when it's going to happen. But um, real quick, King Mix is asking, what's Jameson's contract? Two-way contract, whatever. I have no idea. Fritos. Fritos and a hot dog. <laughs> but It's crazy how much money these guys make. And we're like, oh, it's nothing. <laughs> NBA money is not real-world money. No, it's not. <laughs> I just always – I was thinking about that a lot this weekend. It's like, oh, he's on like minimum, you know, like 3.6. And I was like, oh. Wish I could make three point six million this year. <laughs> Just accidentally. Yeah, I think they um I, I want to say that um every game that they play is almost I, I think every one game is a fourth of a year of a contract down in um in, in the G League. So if you play four <laughs> games in the on the show, I think you make a whole year salary of what you actually get paid in the G League for a year. I believe that I, I believe that match right. I'm not, I'm not, don't quote me on that. I that's believe nice. that's right. So what they're doing is they're actually making uh decent money when they play uh on the team. So uh shout out to them. Um yeah. any, any other positivity you saw tonight? Because um I don't want to get too far and too long into the show tonight, just overall, but uh the positivity, you know, it, there's not much there. Like the Nuggets did not look like they tried, they literally did not. Jokic never looks like they, he tries, and he's amazing, at all, as always. Yeah, they just – I mean, <laughs> it's just a team that – one is the prob- the best team in the NBA probably, despite yeah. what the records may say. Um, they no, they are, are the, the, they are the best in the West. I 
Is that right? That is correct. I, I don't listen. Don't. Oh wow! Come on now. I'm gone for one weekend. <laughs> Completely <laughs> lose track. Um, hey, if you had to pick, real quick, let, let's get off off um, off trail real quick. Positives. Let's go. Um, two teams, two best teams in the league. One from the east, one from the west. Do you do you go ahead and back that up and say, hey, if I had to put money right now on two teams to come out and be in the finals, who would they be? Nugget Celtics. So you're just going to stay with the top. Like, there's, like, are they that far ahead of everybody else below them? Yeah. I, if I hadn't looked at the standings, I would have said Nugget Celtics. I had the standings pulled up, but yeah, it's just every time I watch them, I'm like, they are just so much better. Yeah. Than everybody yeah. else. In the in the chat, give me your two teams. I, I'm curious about this because um, it, it's kind of happening right now in uh, college basketball. Is you know, if everybody saw it, you know, the the Sweet 16. Everybody, you know, now has moved into the Sweet 16. There were 16 games played, and the favorites won 15 of the 16 games just outright. And the only one that did not is Clemson over Baylor, and Baylor was a three, Clemson was a six. Like it wasn't that big of a, a discrepancy. Yeah. Um, and so, like Clemson easily could win. Uh, but give me your teams uh, because I, I think I'm I'm there with you because Denver looks like the best team. They look the deepest, um, and that is not recency bias. I have always been a Denver fan. Uh, but I, I don't know if I believe in Boston just yet. But man, Listen, they, they continue to they, win. They they might not. They may not just be able to figure it out. But I mean, yeah. this is not like a team that's like, oh, they just flame out. Like this is a team that's been to the finals a couple times mm -hmm. in recent years, right? Like it's not just some team that has never proven it in the playoffs. They just haven't actually gotten over the championship hump, which is like. There's yeah. levels to this, right? Like, right, right. If that's the that's a tier. It's like, oh, we just haven't been able to win the title. Yeah, I'd still I'd pick them to go to the finals, man. The Bucks, I think, ooh, could give them a push, like the because the Bucks are have won it, and they yeah. have the guys that have won it. And when you put guys like Giannis and Dame and then Middleton together, and they're clicking, mm -hmm. it's it can work. I just don't think the Knicks have enough. Yeah. I, I just don't think the Knicks have enough because they, they, I think, are going to be the ones that push whatever round they go out, they push the team to the limit. But mm -hmm. I don't see them actually winning it or getting to the <laughs> They're a speed bump. <laughs> well, but they're like, they're not just a speed bump. They're like the random speed bump that's two feet high in the middle of a 35. Right? Like it's the, <laughs> oh, I didn't see that coming. And now I think I blew my tire. Like that, they're that one. But um, what an analogy! Boston is just—I mean, just talent-wise. Yeah, it, it they just are so head and shoulders above. And to be clear, they also have a guy who's won it, Drew Holiday. They have—they mm -hmm. have one of those bucks, right? And so, yeah. if they don't, then Missoula is going to be in like John, what you call it from the Bible, disciple hot water. That's that one's there for brother Kenneth. <laughs> that one there's for brother Kenneth. Brother Kenneth. <laughs> there's going to be some real hot water for Joe Missoula because they absolutely should go to the finals and they should give Denver a run for their money. Yep. Listen, I, I think that um, I believe in the Celtics. I believe in Denver. I just believe in Denver the most. Hold on. I got to bring these up because they say Boston has shown for years they can't get over the hump. The Celtics in the playoffs just can't trust them. I'm like, this is a team that's been to the finals. That's what I'm saying. It's like they've been to the finals, but then they lost to like the Warriors when they're going full bore, right? Who and then was the other one the Nuggets? They lose to the Nuggets in the finals. I think, yeah. It's like like last year. Why are we saying we can't trust them? They got to the NBA finals and then lost to awesome teams. Like well, maybe I, they can't get over that hump, but it's not yeah, like, yeah. oh, we can't trust them in the playoffs. That's where I think I've heard a lot of like, we can't trust Boston in the playoffs. And I'm like, what the hell? The team's been to the finals like twice in the past, what, four years, five years? Yeah, I, I think that it, it, I think it goes to show like when it, like we, we've seen Tatum just kind of He's right. bow out a little bit. Um, He's right. And like, I, I, I just don't. I don't know. Like the Heat have shown that they can just kind of dominate the Celtics a little bit within the playoffs, and we—that's what we've seen. We've been burned by them, you know, as well. And so, like, I like them. I, I think they're—I think they're a very good team. 
I just don't know if I believe in really if I really believe in Jalen Brown. I, I I believe in Tatum King, wow. but Tatum goes quiet, man. He <coughs> goes invisible, man. Like just randomly on a Let's on a see. random night, and so I, I don't I, I don't love them. If I had to pick anybody, I would probably pick the Bucks just because Dame is just so nasty. But he's never won anything either. So um, and Giannis is Giannis, and so he's just tough. Yeah. And the, and I was King Meeks is right. They've only been um, they've one. only been once. I was yeah. wrong, but I just I you know we've talked about this a lot on the show. I've never been a believer in the Dame Bucks thing. Yeah. I just never thought that put them farther than Drew Holiday did from an all-around yeah. skill set. Um, yeah, no, I, I believe uh, I'm the same way. And so, as Black New yeah. DJ is saying is, uh, you know, they have all the talent. The Celtics have all the talent to win in the championship. But when it time comes to finish, to beat the final boss like The Rock, they just can't. And so, no, I, I actually I, I agree with that. I just think they will be the ones trying to beat them. Just, just call them the Cody Crybabies. That's what they'll be. <laughs> Um, be wrestling. So. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea. Uh, <laughs> but real quick, uh, the the comment section. Thank you guys as always. Uh, you're you're always amazing. But the comment section is sponsored by the Street Cars of Memphis. Regular maintenance to your car, plus all the modification needs, speakers, lights, lifts, wheels, whatever you need, they can modify them all. Uh, use code Grizz on a one and get a fifty five regular oil change and sixty five dollars for full synthetic oil change. It's an oil change at cost. Uh, there's huge savings taking place down there at Street Cars of Memphis, but go check them out online at 901scm.com or call 901-323-3332 and schedule your oil change, maintenance, or customization service today. Uh, Street Cars of Memphis, the official sponsor of the comment section. Um, I need to get an oil change for my wife. Maybe I'll I'll send them down there. Uh, the Boston Crybabies. There you go. There you go. Um, all right. Uh, anything else you want to hit on this game but kind of before we move on? Th- there's not been much. Um, and honestly, tonight, I, I don't I don't have much personally. It, as the chat goes, I'll go. Uh, but for the most part, I, I don't know of any topics that we want to hit on tonight that I've really just have a need to hit on. Um, but one question. Everybody's really, really wondering. Ah, sharp. How was your vacation? I pulled my hamstring. It sucked. <laughs> no, man, let me tell you, I'm closer and closer to moving to Texas. It's the land of wealth and freedom. I'm Where'd telling you, you and meat. We went to we went to Dallas. One of my buddies lives in Dallas, and so he was the lowest common denominator of time available. So I went there, and it's just like meat and Tex Mex and Mexican food everywhere, and cheap property. <laughs> just, it's awesome so ocean from we went to this place called hard eight dude let me tell you and it is not what you would think it is based off the way we have a maturity level on this show but it was just like meat by the pound type place again yeah. pause but just brisket and sausage and steaks dog it was good but i'm glad to be back most certainly glad to be back i like it man well um all right let's answer one question then we're gonna get to the uh grizz trivia in the second segment, but uh, if we can't <laughs> trade them, should the front office not extend or should they cut Zaire, Santi, and Jake? So uh, to answer this mm-hmm. real quick, um, Santi, yeah. I'm good on. Like, let, let's keep riding him. Um, he's playing very well. His usage rate is 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 falling, and he's playing within himself. He needs better pleasure. Zaire and Jake. They have been extended. They are on their last year contract, I do believe. I haven't looked at their I haven't looked at Grizzlies contracts, you know, in like months. King Meeks. I, I was waiting for King Meeks to hop in there. <laughs> with the cut Zaire now. <laughs> <laughs> he just wants to wrestle. King Meeks is trying to, yeah, wrestle for that contract. Um yeah, Santi, no, you you don't cut Santi. I was about to say he had as many assists. He had one more shot than assist tonight. <laughs> I'm like nice. Yeah, he's playing well right now. Who's this guy? Um, all right, so real quick, let me give you the update. All right, so um, let's make sure this other guy's on a contract. All right, so Santi is on a um, a three point nine million dollar contract next season, and then he's a restricted free agent the season after. Um, Jake Laravia is on a three point three uh, next season, and then a club option that has not been picked up for five million the the following season. All right. Yeah. So that won't be picked up right away for sure. 
Uh, and Zaire's got a six million dollar club option that was picked up already, and then he's a restricted free agent for the next year. So they do have their bird rights. So <laughs> anything that comes in on them, uh, they can actually match. And so if for some reason somebody does send them something, they can. It's I think unlikely they get cut unless they get like they get the opportunity for a move that's worth it, right? It's like okay, we have the opportunity to do something big, and that's going to be necessary. Okay. Generally speaking, I feel like they keep them on, try and put them in some kind of package because it's contracts falling off the books, right? I think both of them, right? Because the option hasn't yeah. been exercised on Jake, so he falls off. But then the option that was exercised on Zaire still falls off this next year, right? So everybody, every player is under contract next season. Right, but it still falls off after. As I'm saying, I'm sorry, after next year. Santi We're- and Zaire are restricted free agents after this upcoming season, yes. And right, then but you trade Jake, and fall off. Yep. Well, yes. For the, for the other team. I'm thinking about putting them in a package as a salary dump. Correct. They will be on a um uh, spot. Yeah. And they will, Jake they would wanna... fall off too, right? Same thing. He would expire after that year. Okay. Jake yeah. has a club option. So if you were to trade Jake, that the team has a club option of I think it was I saw just five million dollars to actually go and 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 opt into that first uh, depending on what whatever the time is. Anyway, yes, they are Santi and Zaire on expiring deals next season. Jake has a club option with with opportunity. Yeah, no, I, I mean, like I said, nobody they might cut. cut. They might cut somebody if it's like just some kind of dream opportunity, and you have to. But generally yep. speaking, they will either let them fall off the books or send them to somebody else so they don't fall off their books. Yeah, I agree. I I don't expect anybody to get cut. There, there's it would be dead money. And you can't afford dead money right now, right now. Uh, four, six, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter. It's still dead money. Uh, Lightning DJ, we're going to answer your question about BC. We're going to talk a little bit more about BC and his return uh, for uh, possibly the next game. I, I believe he comes in, and comes back against the Lakers on Wednesday night. Uh, but before we get there, uh, real quick, we're going to take a, a break. When we come back with Grizz Trivia. What do you think is more of a priority for this team? Because you're starting to hear a lot of rumors coming out about teams that are willing to make trades. I'm a big wing guy. This is Memphis. We barbecue and and wing city. (laughs) I also understand the importance of big men. The best players in the league are all bigs. If you're making a player in a lab, absolutely Mm -hmm. you want to build a Paul George player. You want to build the big wing. You know, Kevin Durant, whatever. Like um, Gigi Jackson. Yeah, or Gigi Jackson, which actually I was thinking about. Well, what about Gigi, Anthony? Um... But unfortunately, those guys aren't out there. And like, even when you start naming specific names of guys you want to get, like the the quality drop off goes down quick. I do think the Grizzlies' easiest avenue to immediately improving next year and getting on the cusp of, of like being, a, you know, like a Western Conference finalist, or maybe mm-hmm. if you get all the great uh, breaks going your way, is is improving your center spot. Just because, mm-hmm. but there's just more of those guys. I feel like available. To right. help you out. Tune in to the Anthony Sane Show Wednesdays and Fridays at 12 p.m. weekly on the Bluff City Media YouTube channel. We are Grizz, not a one, the Memphis Grizzlies post game show. I am Daniel. He is Nate. If you do us a favor, uh, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, as you always do, we can't thank you enough. Uh, but uh, sometimes we get a little lazy and we need to re- re- remind you. Uh, but we always have a good group in here, as always. If you are watching on uh, Twitter, thank you. Uh, go ahead and hit the like and the share. Uh, but come over to YouTube as well. Uh, you can hit the subscribe button here at Bluff City Media. Uh, but also, you can kind of get in here in the chat and uh, kind of becomes a, a family feel. Uh, we're still looking for a name. Can't figure it out. Uh, it'll probably come next season. I don't I don't oh, yeah. believe we're going to force anything this year. Uh, but I do have some th- stuff that I'm trying to do for um, uh, our community team our our guys our crew and gals i guess um that that are here that are rocking with us each and every game um i'm trying to do something for you uh for the upcoming season and so nothing crazy special but i'm hoping to make it more of a family feel uh me and native talked about that a lot and so we want to make sure that we try to do that if possible um it's just trying to figure out the details uh there are memberships coming uh within um bluff city media we're hoping to figure out some of that details let, that it intertwines with the Discord, but it all happens through um, actually YouTube. And so there are, um, I, I think, behind the 
the paywall of YouTube. Uh, there is a Memphis Tigers one uh, with Hitman Hoops uh, that they're starting to do now. So I think they're trying to do some other shows that are behind that, but also include you know the memberships within it. So some things coming. They're they're trying some things, and so stay tuned for that. Uh, we want to make sure we do that. But uh, but Pew's Residential Spray, uh, they do flower shops, but also commercial landscape. They do all of that. Uh, but the Pew's Residential Spray has been their biggest thing that you want to get onto right now. And the reason I say that is because if you can get down with them, right now is the time. Because if not, you're going to have weeds. And you're going to be killing those weeds all summer. But if you go ahead and get down their product on your grass, it will help eliminate that. And so you're not having all these stupid weeds uh, sprout up all summer long. Uh, you should not have flowers in your yard unless they're in your flower bed. Okay. When you see these flowers, my kids love them. They're not in my yard. They're in the neighbor's yard and they go pick them all the time. They're not actual real flowers. Those are weeds. Uh, but go ahead and call Pew's Residential Spray now uh, and they create that perfect weed free lawn. Uh, you can call them at 901 633 2118. Let them know the Grizz Animal Crew sent you. Remember, Pew's, you get big company strength, small company value. I know you didn't like my transition. It sucked. Oh, it's not just that it sucked. I had one just geared up and ready for the people. But now the people got to wait until the next show. I had a great transition, just locked and loaded. And you gave us that 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 crap. That, <laughs> that King dirty, Meeks, dirty pill. King Meeks wants to do a cookout. Listen, I'm down. I have I I still I still think my black card is valid. Okay, I was given it many years ago. I still think it's good, uh, but we can do a cookout at my house, uh, barbecue beers, wings, whatever you might need. Um, and so if you don't know what that means, then you're really not from Frazier or from Memphis in general. If you don't know what a cookout is. Fra if you're, Fra Frazier not all, specifically? <laughs> not all of us white boys would get invited to cookouts. Yeah. I've gotten invited to many cookouts. Well, um, all right. see the tone of my skin. It's extra white, so... <laughs> All right, let's get to it. All right, all right, all right. I have the Grizz trivia. My last one was the laziest, worst trivia question ever, but I did not know what else to do, and I thought Ryan might just be a dummy or even intoxicated enough to not be able to answer because he was down in Biloxi uh, betting, gambling, and watching <laughs> all the shows, the uh, all the basketball games. So I didn't think he'd even pay attention, but he still got it right. But you see, he had um, internet. <laughs> he did have internet. All right. So the Grizzlies, they are uh, shooting uh, very well on the road, and uh, especially from deep. They have now hit a franchise record, double-digit Three point makes on the road. Nate, how many games in a row do you think they've done this? Double digit threes on the road. Oh gosh. Double digit threes on the road in a row. Yo, say, shout out to you, Choicey? Maybe? I don't know. I, I don't know. It feels you like a fun thing, Choicey. Yeah, uh, but listen, uh, listen, the, the next day on the podcast, you know, listen, we can't can't appreciate you, but everybody else enough. Uh, but just kind of come through here to show some love, give a like. I um, appreciate you, man, um, or lady, whoever you might be. But yeah, shout out to you. Uh, but the Grizzlies now have hit a franchise record and no, it's not three or two games in a row. <laughs> Double digit three point makes on the road as a team. How many games in a row? Let's say nine. <laughs> I'm saying nine. Nine for a franchise record. Do you know how bad this team is at shooting threes? The next guess was 12. So at least I was going in the right direction. You're not even close. What is it? 17? You're still not close. No way. You're not close. 28. You're very close. They have hit 20-something? 20 20-something? 20 the Grizzlies have had 27 straight games 
on the road. This team? Where they have had double digit three point makes. That's un- that's surprising. Yeah, this team has sucked at shooting threes for forever, despite the fact they now shoot 50 per game. And I just couldn't imagine this team stringing together that many games in a row that they actually do it. That's super surprising. Yep, franchise record for uh, for the Grizzlies just overall, but uh, but 27 straight. Um, <laughs> that's good, the shooter. Shout out to you. And we lost all them too, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you know what I found today? And Goon, I did not want to do this, but I found if you look at the the shot attempts and the usage rate and the points per game, if you look at them, if you go to NBA.com, go to their stats section, go just to the Grizzlies and dissect it down. I was doing it today looking for some a, a different, you know, Grizz trivia stat. If you look at it, do you know who goes into the on losses is the first on usage? Shot attempts and points on NBA, like the whole league, Grizzlies when they uh, lose. When they lose, uh, nope. It's Jaron, but to his, to, it, it doesn't it doesn't go that bad though because yeah. he is like second or third in all the other categories when they win. And so, listen, <laughs> that still go to his narrative, which sucks. Just so happens they always lose. <laughs> that is, that's, pretty much not his fault it was just this year so i, I don't want to give too much but uh yeah again i thought you'd like that one I, I looked as much as i could and i could not get any other way to spin it so i just said f it I'm here's, gonna find another here's one. what i forgot to factor into my my mathematical algorithms is that tonight they hit double digit threes on the road while shooting 25 percent. exactly <laughs> they're gonna as alan says chunkers are us Dude, just like just like Oh, and Santi only took three. That's even more surprising. No. Oh, we. This was. I thought that was fun though. Uh, all right, so shout out to all of you for kind of helping out with that. Um, all right, let's get to um, the Brandon the Brandon uh, Clark talk. So, from my understanding, Can Brandon Clark the, is it? Huh? There's trivia music off. Do you want it off? Yeah, kind of. Does it remind you that you suck at it or no? Listen, I'm on a cold streak. I started off smoking you. Listen, just like the Grizz. Got real hot after the turn of the new year. Calm down. You know, I'm just identify with the team, which means I'm losing a lot right now. So you suck. I'm losing a lot right now. Yeah. I hey, I'm one with the team. All right. Let's talk about Brandon Clark. Expectations for BC when he returns. Yeah, the, the expected return date should be Wednesday. He, um, a, as you all know, two questionables, or, or sorry, two doubtfuls, and you get a questionable, which means you probably get to play the next time. So we should see him back Wednesday night. So um, first question: start, sit, or bench? I feel like probably bench because he's going to be in a bench role next year, and yep. that way it's not like forcing anything crazy, but. I don't know. We'll see who plays for them that night. <laughs> I think you're going to see all the guys play. You think so? So I, I don't think we see Luke Kennard. But the reason that Luke Kennard has been personal reasons is, from my understanding, is because his wife is expecting a baby very soon. He did not travel. For the reason is, is one, he didn't travel, so he didn't have to hurry up and rush back to get back if, it, if his wife did have a have a baby. That's my understanding. That is not the truth. I don't know, but I know that his wife is expecting very soon. So maybe he didn't want to go on a West Coast road trip um, and then have to fly across country if his wife was going to give birth any minute. Fair. His wife could have given birth already. We have no idea. Yeah. But I would imagine that he could be back uh, because it is a home game. I, but I don't know. Uh, but I, I do think that we're going to have um, uh, Conchar. He's still out another game or two. He has a hill issue. They announced that tonight. Uh, but for everybody else, Jaron, Bain, I don't know about Vince, uh, but we just saw Lamar. Like, I, I think that we're going to be, for the most part, we're going to be more healthy than we have been in a, in a long while. <clears throat> well, I just wonder what the two ways, who doesn't play. But most likely off the bench still is what I would guess. Yeah. I would I would assume. Um, and so we'll, we'll see. Uh, but you know what we could do? 
is we could have had Kenny Lofton Jr. here this year. You know what that does? It works the opposite of what we wanted. We don't want more wins right now. <laughs> Unmoved. <laughs> uh, yeah, is Black he Ninja on an NBA team right now? He, I don't believe. Uh, he's on the Salt Lake. Uh, he's Salt Lake uh, G League team. Okay. You should probably know that, you know, right down the street from the crib. Yeah, I go to jazz games all the time. Um, what What's your thoughts on him just overall? Do you think he comes back and has a decent role? Do you think he, um, you know, 12 to 15 minutes, or you think they actually give him maybe 20? Oh, I don't know. I, I think 15 probably sounds about right. But yeah. if it's the Memphis Grizzlies and a guy's coming back from a traumatic injury, he's ready. <laughs> Like he's he's, he's ready, good, ready. <laughs> he's he's ready. Well, and but honestly, like given the context of this season as well, like the way the season has gone, they don't need him to come back for anything. Like if he's coming back, he's coming back to play. Yeah. Period. Like that is literally the only reason is so that he can play basketball. And so, um, fifteen seems right, but you know the same thing. The way they treated this injury, I'm sure they made sure he was more than ready to come yeah. back. Maybe he does see 20 minutes really quick. Um, I would be a little surprised, but we'll see. But I, I think we will see him as a full bore, Brandon Clark, while he's out there, right? Like, I don't think they will ease him back into the mix. He may ease himself back in, right? Like, he may be like, oh, like, I want to test it, right? I'm yeah. sure getting back into game action, you're a little bit freaked out. You can't not be after an injury like that. Um at the same time, I feel like once he gets going, they're going to be trying to like get him to do Brandon Clark things. Like, right. Get to that bunny, get him a lob, see what we can do here. Right. So, yeah. It's exciting, man. It's really exciting. You know, it's the same thing. We've, they've spread it out perfectly. Honestly, great job by the PR department. They have spread out the things for us to be excited about <laughs> since Ja and Dez and Marcus went down. <laughs> it's like this season's in the tank. We're like, hey, guys played really hard for like one month and we're going to start doing like bringing guys back. Gigi national TV, go ahead and show them what you actually got. Then <laughs> it's like, they've spread it apart so that we can be excited about things. So we have one more thing to be excited about to get us to the end. Uh, unfortunately, the only thing we don't have is any more national TV games, but we do have 10 games remaining. I expect to see Brandon Clark in five of the 10 for sure. Yeah, I would imagine so. I think that's easy. And the reason is, and if anybody's ever played sports or any whatever, if you're coming off of an, injury, an injury, these are the most important games for him. It's because it allows him to kind of honestly have stress-free games, even though he's going to be stressed the F out because he's going to be so <laughs> nervous. He, he won't trust his body. But what it does is get him in games, and then he has the full offseason to hopefully – uh, get you know over the fact that you know he's already played some games and kind of just puts it in the back of his mind. So he's gonna be big. Um, but ten games remaining. Anything you're looking forward to? Uh, Brandon Clark coming back. <laughs> that's a, that's a One thing, real quick, I want to say before I forget. Old Wayne, I was sick of hearing about Lofton. Grizz fans just want the second coming of Zebo. He's not that guy. Guess what? He can't be that guy because a guy from NC State is that guy. Bro, he looks just like Zebo. He is a freight train. I almost my buddy Chuck loves the dude, and I almost I was not a big fan when I thought they were about to lose um, to who did they play? They almost lost to uh, uh, Oakland. Oakland when they almost lost to Oakland because I had them in my survivor pool. But lo and behold, we're still here. Are you? Is your survivor uh, pool still going? Still going, and I have all my top seeds left besides Creighton. Every top seed I have left besides Creighton. So, and I don't intend to use them again. So, we, uh, anyways, I'll have to say we already had the second coming of Zebo, and he's wearing red. He's about to have the yeah. season ended, though. That's yeah. that game's not going to go very well for him, uh, for them. But, um, I forgot what we were even talking about. Oh, what are we looking forward to? Brandon Clark coming back. Yep. Um, honestly, seeing Brandon and Dez and Jaron on the floor together. Um, I really hope we get Vince back, like for a guy that yeah. has been such a soldier through this season to then get hurt when guys start to come back. Like I would love for him to get minutes with 
some of the actual roster guys back, the top seven guys back. Um, but outside of that, the same thing we've been looking forward to, which is seeing how some of these other guys operate within that structure. So it would be good for Dez and Jaron and BC to have each other, but it will also be really good for Gigi to have all these guys. Like the more people you add in, the easier the game gets for Gigi Jackson, the easier yeah. the game gets for Vince Williams, the easier the game gets for Trey Jamison for that matter. Um, which I think, and Brevin brought it up tonight, is a good reminder to us that Jaron's really good. <laughs> Dez is really good. Brandon's really good. And none of these guys, John Moran, good. And it's a good reminder I thought Brev had tonight of, like, once you get these guys back, like John Morant back, the game just gets so much easier for everybody. Yep. Just hold on. <laughs> I know everyone is, like, slowly approaching the cliff of despair as the season <laughs> ends. And I'm like – Guys, like, it's coming back. <laughs> a lot of people are coming back, and one of them is John Moran. So yeah. just like, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. We've made it so far. <laughs> I, there's only 10. Listen, at this point, like, I didn't want to do the show tonight just because I'm tired and the show and the, and the, the game and stunk. <laughs> but once I turn on the, the, the show and push, you know, go live, like, I kind of get a little, you know, little boost of energy and honestly it's kind of hanging out with some friends and in, in, in a sense um oh. and so always a good time and so i'm you know i usually you know I, i'm up once we start going also let's let's look at this the games they have coming up lakers at home possibly with brandon, i guess the at home thing doesn't matter this year but possibly with brandon we clark we won't win magic pistons bucks and eh. pistons sixers spurs Cavs probably won't go well. Lakers, Nuggets will pretend that one doesn't exist. Those are a bunch of games you can compete in, especially yeah. if you're bringing back bodies. Like, we could have fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's a chance. There's a chance we have a good time. So you tell me there's a chance. Um, we're definitely not doing weekends still, um, and, unless we get <laughs> uh, somebody else to come in and do these. Uh, but I know the 76ers won the 4 6 one. Uh, that is the, um, the, the they're doing for Mark Gasol. Uh, and then this Saturday is the 3.30 is um, is the magic. So besides that, we have eight shows left. Um, I don't know how many you have actually left. You have like Not five. that many. <laughs> <laughs> Less than that. Yeah, so um, I know I will miss one of those shows uh, throughout the year. Uh, Nate and I will both be here 414 to end the year. It will be a Sunday game. It will be a you know a, a sleepy game. But we always want to make sure we do the last game, uh, even though it is on a Sunday. Uh, but just kind of give you a little bit. Nate is going on a uh, an actual another vacation, and he's going to miss a few in a row. Um, and so I will be here for the most part, except for one game. It's on my uh, my actual anniversary. I'm going to take that off on 4-12. Uh, that is a Lakers game. So, uh, But besides that, man, that's it. Um, I'm excited about Brandon Clark. I, I really do think that he has a chance to, to really show like what he can do. And yeah. I really sometimes – you there, it's easily forgotten how much these guys – how good they really are. And um, I, I really think that he has a chance to come and show that he can really be a, um, a, a true rotational player as he always has been. Okay. I have one question for you. Yep. Not related to the Grizzlies at all. Yeah. Who do you have losing to UConn in a national championship? But I want to ask you, you have one in it. Cause if it's not UConn, you're. <laughs> Dude, just, uh, so so I have, yeah. So I have Houston. I have Houston in one, and then I have um, Creighton in one, <laughs> surprisingly enough. Mm -hmm. So that's it. All right. I am going to take – oh, dang it. I was going to take Houston. <laughs> dang it. That sucks. Um, oh. I will then take – What are you doing Marquette. Okay. I'll take Marquette. Four. To lose to UConn in the national championship. Oh, so this is like a um, teams to root for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who do you think is going to come in second? Because we, I just, I already know <laughs> UConn's who I think coming, is first. coming first. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, who do you think is coming out the other side? Yeah, I do. Th I'm debating in my survivor pool picking the Zags over Purdue this coming week, though. That's one that I have sort of like, kind of like maybe, but other than that, 
saving all my top seeds. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm uh, I'm going. Um, I'm going Arizona over somebody, and then I'm going to go probably Marquette over um, NC State. Yeah. Well, we're getting to the point where points are starting to matter. That's so. what I'm thinking about using <laughs> NC State just for fun. Um, Oof. Oof. <laughs> over Marquette, but I think Marquette's going to dominate them. Yeah. That's, anyway, that's a bad idea, Daniel. <laughs> yeah, I agree. All right, let's get to the uh, this last question, and then we're going to wrap it up from here. Uh, Kimix wants to know. So hold up. What are we doing for the off season here then? What are we doing, Nate? What do we normally do every off season? If you are a new person to Grizz on a one, uh, we did this last year and I think it worked out fairly well. Um, and I have actually been given and nobody's here to tell me I can't, but I was actually talking to the head bosses of Bluff City Media and they said, whatever day you really want to go live on and whatever time you have, Probably first rider refusal. We're not going to go live during the day. Um, and so it will be at night. Uh, and we normally do a certain day. But, um, you know, what day do we normally do, Nate? Wednesdays. No, it's Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I disappear into a cave and ask everyone to leave me alone. <laughs> so Tuesday uh, throughout the off season is normally what we do. Is So if you are... Uh, joining here as always, we only go once a week during the off season. Yeah. And so we will go Tuesdays through the playoffs for sure. Um, if, if something, uh, big, you know, happens, you know, obviously we'll try to do a live show, um, yeah. just kind of breaking news or whatever. Uh, but Tuesdays at eight o'clock, uh, central, uh, we do it later at eight because obviously our shows are usually low, uh, later instead of us going that late. Uh, we start a little bit earlier, so uh, we don't want to start at like six or seven. We think eight's a good time because normally our audience is eight o'clock or nine o'clock. Um, anyway, so um, and then uh, we will do a live uh, post game show probably after a random uh, uh, summer league game. Normally, yeah, um, and we draft always show. and we always have a draft special. Yeah, always. Uh, last year went four hours, which was, yeah, not, it was miserable. It was stupid. <laughs> I wore a tie. What a bad idea that was. That's when the John Martin doppelganger stuff started too. Shout out to Sam. Yep. We're not Came doing that this there. year. Bla um, blazing. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I know we'll go live very early on. I, I don't I think we might maybe do a couple different appearances. I, I don't know if we'll go live the entire that's a long time because we we start we started last year in the twenties and it went four hours, <laughs> so we're not starting at one. That's um, terrible. <laughs> yeah. So that's the plan for the off season, but we will be here obviously for the next uh, ten games, eight of the ten for sure. We will have a show, um, and then we'll see if we can get somebody else come on any other time uh, possibly. But at this point in the season, I probably won't just because it's not worth it unless somebody really wants to. So. Yeah. Um, that's all we got. Nate, you got anything else? Uh, yeah, bedtime. Yeah, it is bedtime. <laughs> uh, oh, before we get to bedtime, we do have one more, and I almost forgot, and that is Heaven's Healthy Kitchen. It's a grassroots business that was started right here in Memphis. Uh, Chef Smith is a Memphian through and through and promotes healthy eating and wellness. Something Kenny Lofton could check in on. And are you looking for to cook at home? Well, Chef Smith, <laughs> you can get the cookbook right now. And uh, just go over and download it on Amazon, and it is uh, straight to your house. Uh, but Heaven's Healthy Kitchen continue, continues to do monthly pop-ups. The next one is coming up in April, so stay tuned um, and when the next one will pop up. Uh, but Heaven's Healthy Kitchen, you can find them at orderhhk.com, serving and catering plant-based and vegan gourmet foods straight to you. There's Heaven's Healthy Kitchen. I can't believe he's still here. Look at that. All right, so... Um, yeah, Lightning DJ. Someone say draft special. Hey, you guys. <laughs> it reminds me of Goonies <laughs> so, so much. Uh, but for real, go check out uh, Heaven's Healthy Kitchen. Uh, somebody go buy the cookbook and then give it a review and let us know about it. Um, I want to know because, I, you know, listen, my wife cooks for the most part. I can dabble if I need to. Um, but um, I want to, maybe I should just get it. Maybe, maybe I'm talking to myself. Um, but Nate, anything else that you have? I know you said you uh, you didn't, but anything else you got before we uh, completely get out of here? All right, 
No. I well, want cookies, but also sleep. Yep. Well, uh, <laughs> another good show out of you out of you all uh, for kind of always chiming in, helping out. Uh, tomorrow is uh, tomorrow's going to be fun uh, for me. Tomorrow, I'm old. It's my 40th birthday tomorrow. So, one, um, it should be a blast. I wish it would stop raining cats and dogs outside. But uh, it should be a good time. My, my kids are probably more excited about it than I am at this point in life. Uh, but it should be a good time. And so we'll uh, we'll all have some some fun and then we'll we'll report back on Wednesday how everything went. So but yes, the big four oh man. I don't Probably know. Do. I'm, I'm up over the hill, under the hill. I don't know. I don't know. You are the hill. <laughs> I am <laughs> the hill. <laughs> all right, but that's all we got, man. Uh thank you all for coming out, hanging out. Before you get out of here, hit the like button on your way out. Uh we uh we always appreciate you all, but uh but that's all we got. I can't find the button, so I can't get us out of here. All right, that's it. Be nice and tell your friends.